Welcome to the Rowdy Studio, our final pre-race video of the 2011 NASCAR Sprint Cup season. I'm Buzz Cutler. That's Bassmaster. It all comes down to this one event to decide the championship. And Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards were kind of trading barbs at their pre-race press conference yesterday. The yes. smack talk was a flying. Yeah, Tony was on the offense, I thought, with some of his comments. And Carl, a little bit on the defense, but not rattled. I didn't think Carl Edwards was rattled. Let's play a little bit. Some highlights from that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're I told gonna, you earlier, you can come visit my trophy in the room at Vegas when you get out there. He's got the talking part figured out. Uh, problem is, I don't think you led the points yet this year, have you? You know, they say that there's talkers and doers. I've done this twice. Well, that's, that's the funny thing. I have listened to you a lot today. You've talked a lot about your past successes, and that, that is very respectable. What do you think? I mean, did Tony get under Carl's skin at all? I didn't see any of that. He might have gotten under his skin, but so what? I don't think he got under his skin enough to affect the outcome of Sunday's race. I don't think Carl Edwards is Denny Hamlin. This championship is not going to be decided at a pre-race press conference, and Tony Stewart isn't going to affect or unnerve Carl Edwards enough to, uh, to, to throw him off his game. Well, I just don't believe that. In my opinion, sort of stepping back and looking at this thing, I feel like Carl has taken Tony's best shots on the racetrack and off the racetrack. Go back to Texas, uh, where Tony Stewart ran away, maxed out, won the race. Well, Carl Edwards could have lost a bunch of points that day. Instead, he lost, what, four or five uh, because he came back and finished second. So he took a pretty hard shot from Tony right there. Then Tony comes out at Phoenix and dominates a lot of that race, the first part of that race. At the end of the day, Carl Edwards, working on his race car and adjusting on his race car, comes back and finishes ahead of Tony in second place. So I feel like on the racetrack, Carl has taken Tony's best shots, and he's still standing there. And off the racetrack, I think if you look at it, Carl Edwards has still stayed calm. He stayed focused. He's not playing too much into it. He's re responding a little bit, but not too much. So I think mentally he's in a good spot. Tony can say all he wants that Carl's guys are rattled. I think there is some truth to the fact that Carl has a little more pressure on him than Tony does. But I just don't think it's enough, as you say, to really change the outcome. But the fact that Tony Stewart went on the offense and that he did so because he's playing catch-up, I think in some ways should reinforce the fact that Carl Edwards should feel good about his relative position. He's out in front. He has maintained his points lead through this whole thing. And so Carl Edwards might look at Tony Stewart and say, wow, you're working pretty hard over there, Tony, to try to rattle me. Maybe you're a little nervous here well, as I don't, opposed to me. Yeah, I don't think Tony's nervous either. No. But I do think Tony's working real hard to try to catch Carl and he's going to do all he can to catch him. But I think if Tony wins this championship, it will simply be because he outran Carl Edwards at Homestead, Miami. And that comes back to the performance side of the equation. And I ask you, who do you see being the faster car, the faster driver on Sunday? Well, obviously it wouldn't shock me to see either one of these guys win. But look, Carl Edwards has won two of the last three races at Homestead, Miami. This is his style of racetrack. It is Ford's style of racetrack. And ever since they reconfigured Homestead, Tony Stewart really hasn't gotten this place dialed in. Now, might he on Sunday? Sure. It wouldn't be shocking to, think, to see him have a good run on Sunday. I just think Carl Edwards and Roush Fenway Racing and Ford have an advantage at this racetrack, and that's why I think Carl Edwards will prevail. I think, you know, Tony Stewart... It's almost like a Brad Keselowski situation where you say you can't really look at the numbers from the past because he's in a different place now. And I, I think agree. that's true of Tony Stewart. But when we talk about a driver being good at a racetrack and consistently good, and mind you, Texas wasn't quite this way for Carl Edwards. Texas was a hit or miss track, more of a hit or miss track for Carl Edwards. And that means that sometimes you get the setup, but sometimes you're a little confused and you don't really know what you want. Whereas Homestead, Miami, Carl is consistently fast there, and that means... He knows what he wants the car to feel like to go fast. And when you know that, you can be very precise in what you want from your crew chief and what adjustments you want. The crew chief understands from the notes and from what you say what you need to feel and what he needs to give you to be fast. And the chances that Carl Edwards will get that on Sunday are much higher at Homestead, Miami, than they were even at Texas. So especially when you consider that they're bringing back the same tire that they had there last year. And I would say the chances are much higher that Tony, that, that Carl Edwards will uh, get this track dialed in than Tony Stewart will. I agree with you there, too, because this is more of a hit-or-miss track for Tony 
now that they've reconfigured it. So, so we're both leaning towards Carl? I got to lean towards Carl. And, and we got to say this also. That's not the rowdy way for us to both I know. pick the same guy. But, but we do have to say one thing. Yeah. Which is obviously Tony could hit the setup, et cetera, et cetera. There's also this thing that people call luck or fortune that's always out there in races that's not an insignificant factor. You can't just say, well, that might, you know, the chances of something bad happening to one of these guys aren't that great. They may be 10%. But there's always a significant chance that somebody hits you, that you blow a tire, you get a penalty, although I don't see a speeding penalty trap in one of these guys, depending on the situation. Uh, but there's always those things out there that could radically alter the outcome of the race. And, and those things are lurking, so it doesn't necessarily have to come down to performance. You know why? I guess what I'm driving at. You know why? What? Because Lady Luck is a fickle mistress. <laughs> really? That's why. Luck be a lady tonight. Yeah, a lady wouldn't leave her escort. It isn't fair. It isn't nice. No, it's not. A lady wouldn't wander all over the room and blow on some other guy's dice. Heavens no. Bassmasters, Buzz Cutler, watch the race. We'll come back on Monday to talk about it. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com. Rowdy.com.